Hey everyone and welcome to another Game Maker video. So today we're going to be taking a look at some new features that are being implemented pretty soon here in Game Maker Studio 2. So they had a little poll for everybody and they found that a lot of people actually want an update to GML, so the programming language used inside of Game Maker Studio 2. And yeah, you can see here that they've come out with a bunch of things that they're adding. And so we're going to go through them pretty quickly because this is just an overview video. And first of all, they have chained accessors. So what this means is that we can actually access each element of an array individually. So right here, this is actually a three-dimensional array. And this is going to be really useful to be able to access your different arrays in different ways. That rhymed. All right. So yeah. And they are also saying it's going to be backwards compatible because kind of the old way of doing it is to have a comma here, but now they have a two-dimensional array. And this looks a lot more like different programming languages such as Java, as I'll point out throughout this video. And yeah, you can see they go over information about it, what exactly it means, some functions that aren't going to work anymore with it. And now we're on to method variables. So right here, we can see something that says var log equals function a, and then we have these squiggly brackets, and then, yeah, some code in here. So if you've only really used GameMaker Studio, and you haven't really used other programming languages, you probably don't know too much about methods. But basically, what you can do is you can create a method that has a bunch of code inside of it, and then you can run this mo method over and over again. You can kind of do that using scripts right now in yeah in GML but this is kind of the standard way of doing it in most programming languages so really this is just making Game Maker Studio more standard and maybe easier to transfer from Game Maker Studio to a programming language or a different programming language to Game Maker Studio and yeah you can see here they also have a different syntax for it so you would use this if you want it to be a local variable such as or a local method and you want to use this one if you want it to be more of a global function and yeah we can continue here and you can see you can actually put a function inside of a method call so as one of the parameters which really just means that instead of inputting a normal variable or something that you usually put into a function or a method you can actually put a function in, depending on the situation, of course. There's some places where you would never want to do that. But yeah, right here is one place that it works. And yeah, I'm sorry I'm going over this kind of quickly, but I want to get through everything. So yeah, you can have multiple scripts in a single source file. So again, this is just making Game Maker Studio more standard to other programming languages because in most languages you can have as many methods as you want inside an actual file of your code basically so yeah I'll just go over all of this stuff and we here we have lightweight objects so yeah this is a really important thing because this is basically making what is called your own data structure and that's how a lot of programming languages work and they're really centered around this idea of creating your own object so you can see here you have var a equals which is a, yeah another local this is a local lightweight object here and you can see they have the squiggly brackets and then they have variables with uh, colons and then they have functions so yeah, the syntax is quite a bit different than even a lot of programming languages, but this is this is really interesting to look at that they're adding lightweight objects. And what this makes different than say a normal object in Game Maker Studio is the fact that a lightweight object only has what you give it. So a normal object in Game Maker automatically has all kinds of variables, all kinds of information that you may or may not even be using. So this is really useful for people who uh, want to speed up their game, improve efficiency, make things 
only make only things that are really necessary to their game. But again, this is a feature that you don't have to use if you don't want to. And yeah, if it confuses you, then you don't you don't even have to use it. And that's the beauty of this. They're adding all these new features that you can use if you want to, but you don't have to if you don't want to use them. And then now we're going on to well, first let's take a look at this. There's static variables will be supported. So this is really important because again, a lot of programming languages already have this and GML is adding this. So there's the difference between a normal variable and a static variable. So a static variable can be uh, referenced through the class basically, through whatever class is holding it. Now Java doesn't really seem to be I mean, GML doesn't really seem to be implementing actual classes like some other programming languages have, where you create a class and then you actually create instances of that class. So for example, you, you have uh, Vector3, which we have down here. So you create the class for Vector3, and then you create your different Vector3s. Or for example, you create a class for uh, a skeleton enemy and then you make a bunch of different skeleton enemies. It's kind of like you have object skeleton and then you drag in a bunch into your scene. So that's you making actual instances of that object. But the way other programming languages do it, they have, uh, they have their class and then they type out some code to instantiate different instances of that class, of class skeleton, let's just say. So they make new skeleton and then they put in the code for like its starting location and everything instead of actually just dragging it onto the screen like we get to do in Game Maker Studio. So static just means that it belongs to the class not the individual instances. So skeleton probably wouldn't really have any static variables because unless there's something that all skeletons have together you don't really you don't really use the static but it's useful in different cases and you can look into that so <clears throat> now we have the new operator so again this is really important in languages like java like i've already talked about where you actually create a class and then you create yeah class vector 3 and then you do new vector 3 here the syntax is a little bit different we're calling it function vector 3 and then you can see here that these are the variables actually held by Vector3. And then these are the parameters that you pass into Vector3 that these are just temporary. They don't really stay. You don't really care about these. So you just yeah set x equal to underscore x and then underscore x just goes away. You don't care about it anymore. And then same thing here, underscore v. So if you want to add some uh, additional velocity. I'm assuming this stands for something. Maybe not. Oh no, if you want to add a different vector to this vector, then yeah, you use the add method or add function, they're calling it. So yeah, the name of this function is add and what you're doing is you're taking the x value of this vector and you're adding the x value of the other vector. So you pass in the other vector and you call it underscore v. So then to access that you need to do underscore v dot x, underscore v dot y, and underscore v dot z, and then you add it to this vector. So you can see you don't have to put anything in front of this vector because, well, you're inside this vector function here. And yeah. Yeah, so these are class-like objects. And also providing a delete function yeah okay so exception support this is something that I think is going to be very useful just because I used to play nuclear throne a lot which was made with game maker studio and of course this game was developed for a long time and it was released on Steam so it was a pretty serious project but even while playing I would sometimes get errors and the whole game would just stop it would just completely stop working which really, really sucked. But now with this try and catch, that doesn't have to happen anymore. For example, if 
there's some part of your game that you're not 100% sure if it's going to give you an error or not and maybe you've tried fixing it but you just can't figure anything out so to kind of work around that even though it's kind of not necessarily the best practice to do well in some cases it is but in a lot of cases you should really try to just fix the error but yeah you can do a try and catch so you can try your code but it might give you an error and if it gives you an error usually the whole game will just crash and it'll just it'll just stop but now with catch you can actually catch your error and then you can run some different code and yeah you can just pretend like the error didn't happen basically but you can't actually run the original code that you were going to run because that would give you an error and yeah now on to garbage collector so this is another very important feature and yeah with all these new different types of class or different types of functions and variables and everything that are coming along now there needs to be a good way of handling the uh, deletion of all this stuff so while you're running your code you're making these different variables you're making these methods and basically you're ma making these lightweight objects and everything but once you get rid of them or stop using them they don't just instantly get deleted when you stop using them and you don't actually have to manually delete every single object that you create because that would be such a mess to have to keep track of each object you created and when you're going to delete it and everything like that so that's why they have a garbage collector so this does the, all that for you and yeah it's really quite useful for that so they say that it's going to run on a different thread so it shouldn't affect performance of your game however we'll see how that really works out because I mean I've actually had a few problems with garbage collectors in the past so if they do this right then yeah it shouldn't cause an issue to performance but yeah that's really it this is some really exciting news GML is becoming more like Java and other programming languages which I say is a good thing because it's not sacrificing anything really you can see here there's barely any lines except for the arrays it was talking about a few different methods that aren't going to work anymore but looking through this I don't see very many lines that say oh this function won't work anymore that function won't work anymore and so really anything you've already working anything that you're working on now should be fine because all these features except for the arrays are really completely new features that are completely separate and shouldn't affect your code that you have now at all if you're working on a project and yeah I hope you guys are excited as I am to see how these features turn out and excited to code in these new features and learn exactly how they work so thank you for watching and I hope you learned something